Are you stuck trying to figure out how to use Cisco Packer Tracer? Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over showing you how to create something like this. We're going to start off with creating two switches and four computers and then show you how to add in a further switch and two PCs. So I hope this tutorial helps and keep watching. Alrighties, so we've got a clear document now and we're going to get started. So if you come down to the bottom left here, you'll see the different options. So you've got network devices, you've got end devices, components, connections, miscellaneous, and so on. So we want to start off with putting in a router. So we're going to use the 2911 because this one allows for three connections. So when you hover over it, you can see that you've got the three different gigabyte connections there. So that's what we want to do if we're going to be connecting up three switches. Um, I'll show you first how you can connect up two switches and then we'll go and add a third on after that. So we need one of them. Next we need switches. So we're going to switch over to switches, switch with switch. Um, and we're just going to use the 2960. So for the first run, we're going to be using two. So now that we've got two here and our router, we then need to add in our PCs. So we're going to add in the first one and I like to have them start off at one. So we're going to change it to one. So we've got PC one, PC two, PC three, and PC4. So I'm just going to slide these over so you just got a bit more of a definition between them. So now you have your basic structure set up. So now we can draw in our connections. So you want to come to the lightning bolt and we're just going to use the copper straight through. So we'll start off by connecting PC1 on fast ethernet 0 to switch on fast ethernet 0-1. We want to repeat the process on PC2 and we'll connect this one to 0-2. Then we need to rinse and repeat, connect PC3 up to this switch and PC4 up to this switch. Now we need to connect the switches to the router. So we'll grab another cable. This time we're going to connect gigabyte ethernet 0-1 to 0-0 and repeat 0-1 to 0-1. So now we have our structure and as you can see these arrows here for connecting the router to the switches are red which means they're not working while these ones down here are switching to green. So now we need to set up the settings in our router and our switches. So now we want to click on our router and you want to come over to this CLI window. In here it starts off, would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? We're going to write no. And then press return to get started. From here we're going to be entering a few different things. So first off we want to enter enable. Then we want to enter configure terminal. We are now in the configuration for the terminal. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in at all. No, we can't. Um, so yeah, so now we're in here and we want to set up our gigabyte ethernet cables. So the first one we need to do is um, ethernet gigabyte 0-0. So to do this, we type in interface followed by G0-0. You can type in the whole thing, but this is just a shortcut. I'm going to press enter. And now we're going to set up the IP address. So for this switch here, we want to set it to IP address 10.1.1.1. So we type in IP address followed by 10.1.1.1 space. And then we need to do 255.255.255.0. Enter. Now you want to put on no shutdown. This prevents it from turning off. Now you want to press enter followed by exit. Now we're going to rinse repeat and do this for G0-1. So you can actually use the up arrows to get up to here and just change that. It's a bit easier. So this one we want to set it to 192.168.1.1. So we're going to do IP address 192.168. Oops. 
.1.1 space 255.255.255.0. Now you can pick different IP addresses in here. These are just the ones that I'll be using for this tutorial. So now you want to press enter followed by no shutdown and exit. So now we've set up the IP addresses for the two switches. So now that we've connected up the router, if you hover over this green arrow here, you can see that's um, gigabyte 0-0, which is the one we set up as 10.1.1. And then this one is 0-1, which is set up as 192.168.1.1. So now we need to set up our PCs. So we're gonna open up PC1. If you come over to desktop, click IP configuration. In here, you can now enter this information. So we're going to set this PC's IP address as 10.1.1.2. And I'm just going to switch this to 255.255.0. Now you need to set the default gateway as 10.1.1.1. Or if you set it as a different address originally in the IP configuration, when you set the IP address, that's what you need to be putting there because that's the connection. So now you can exit. And now we just got to rinse and repeat. So this one we're going to set to 10.1.1.3. And set the default gateway as 10.1.1. So we can exit. And then we come over here. This is the new switch. So we want to make sure we set this one differently. So 192.168.1.2. 192.168.1.2. And then again on the PC4, 192.168.1.3 and 192.168.1.1. So as you can see, these are now all set up in their configuration and all the arrows are now green. Now in Cisco Packet Tracer, there's two different things you can do. You can do a real time and you can do a simulation. So we're going to start off with doing a real time. So when you make sure this is highlighted over here, the real time, and we're going to click into PC one and we're going to come in and go to command prompt. Now we are on PC one, which is 10.1.1.2. Let's try send a message to PC three. So we're going to go ping. 192.168.1.2 let's see if we get a feedback if we've done this correctly we should get a response and if we haven't we won't get a response so that didn't work the first time but it worked for the first three so we might run that again just to see if yeah so now it's working correctly so how about we try pc4 ping 192.168.1.3 Let's see if this one works. Seems we probably might have a request timeout for the first one again. Yep. And let's try it again. Okay, so that time it's working correctly. Now let's try one more. We're going to go ping 10.1.1.3. And that reply was very quick because it was going within the same switch. So now we've seen that everything is working correctly. And now we could try doing the simulation. All right. So that's how you do one um, with the ping method in real time. Now we're going to try using simulation. So down the bottom right here, there's a simulation bottom box. And you can then come up here into this top bar and find the mail envelope. And we are now going to send a packet over the network and watch how it works. So let's select our PC1 and let's send to PC3. Now in the simulation window, you can select the speed. Um, you can have it play through the entire thing or you can just go step by step by step. So we're going to set a little bit faster because it is quite slow simulation and I just want to make it quick for you. So now we're going to press play. And as you can see, the packet is being sent up to the router, down to the switch and over to PC3. And also, if you look in the event list, it shows you the step it's taking to get to the message and to deliver it. So now we have our message delivered correctly. So that's how you can test to do a simulation or if you wanted to test with the ping method. 
So say you've set this up now and you've realized, oh, I would like to add another switch and a couple more PCs. This is why it was good to use the 2911 router because it actually allows for three different switches to be connected. So let's start off by moving some things around so that we can add in our third switch. So you can just highlight by holding in the click button and select these and move them around. So I'm going to move this over a bit just so we have enough room. Select these ones and I'll move them straight down. And now we want to add in a, another switch. So you're going to come over to network devices, select switches, and we're just going to add in that same switch we've been using before. So I want it to sit about there, I think. And now I just need to add in another two PCs, PC5 and PC6. We might just move them over a little bit so we have a little bit more room. All right. So we need to connect them up the same way as before. So we want to select PC5, connect up to this new switch. Again with PC6 and connect up to this new switch. Oops. And then we want to connect this switch up to the router with gigabyte 0-1 and up to gigabyte 0-2. So now we've got the structure set up. We need to go back in and change the settings to allow this to work. So we want to go into the router like we did last time into CLI and we just want to start over again. So we're just going to click exit, exit. So we're in the very beginning mode again. So now we want to go through this again. We want to enter enable and then we want to go configure terminal. So now we're into the config mode. So we need to set up um, gigabyte 0-2. So we're going to go interface G0-2. Now we're in here and we want to set the IP address for this new router. So we're going to go IP address. For this one, I'm going to set it to 192.168.2.1. Space 255.255.255.0 and then most importantly make it set to no shutdown. Sweet. So now we can exit and we've established this. So now we need to set up PC5 and PC6. So we're going to come over into the same menu again and into IP configuration. We're going to do 192.168.2.3 because I'm just feeling a bit fun and we're going to do 3 instead of 2 and 3. Um, and then we're going to set up the default gateway which is 192.168.2.1. Interesting. Why is it invalid? Did I type it wrong? Yeah, I typed it wrong. <laughs> um, and then we're going to set up PC6. So this one's going to be 192.168.2.4 and the default gateway 192.168.2.1. All right. So now we have everything set up. We've got to see if it works. All right. So now we've got everything set up. We need to test if this works. So let's open, well, let's open PZ2. So we're going to come in here and go to command prompt. And now let's try ping PC5 or PC6 and see if what we've done has worked or not. So we're going to go ping 192.168.2.3, which is PC5. And let's see if it works. Now, remember last time the first one timed out and then the rest of them worked? I believe that's because it's an initial connection going on. It's our first time pinging it. So let's try again. And it worked beautifully this time. So let's check if PC6 works. I think we're going to have a request timer. Yep. But then it works after that. Just setting up the initial connection. So we've gotten it to work. Let's try the simulation. Okay, so now in simulation, we're going to open up simulation. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit just so that you can see the whole screen. Otherwise, it blocks it a bit. 
So we're going to delete what we had last time and we're going to set up a new one. So let's select a packet. Let's send from PC1 to PC6. And we're going to keep it the fast speed again and we're going to press play. And let's see if this works. Down to the switch. It looks like it's working so far. So I think we're in luck. It worked. Awesome. So that is how you set up a, or you change from having two switches to having three switches and adding more PCs. So I hope this tutorial helps and gets you started using uh, Cisco Packet Tracer. You can really build anything so long as you check and make sure that what you're building is working before you get too far in, because you don't want to get everything set up and then nothing works. So I hope this tutorial helps and yeah, see you later. Are you stuck trying to figure out how to use Cisco Packet Tracer? Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to go over showing you how to create something like this. We're going to start off with creating two switches and four computers and then show you how to add in a further switch and two PCs. So I hope this tutorial helps and keep watching.